speak to us today are two preachers of mine, Apollo and Prudence, will share God's word with us this morning. After they have shared God's word, I'll come also to conclude. Put your hands together and welcome Prudence. Thank you, Pastor Macau. Uh, good morning, church. Praise the Lord. My name is Prudence Gathoni. I'm 11 years old and I'm in class five. First, I'd like to thank Pastor Macau for giving me this opportunity to speak to you today. This week has been our DVBS week. Our theme is be being positioned for impact from Isaiah chapter 61, verse one to 11 and Acts chapter one, verse eight. How can children be positioned for impact? This morning, we are going to preach on the topic, what children owe their parents. If you have your Bible, please turn to Ephesians 6, verse 1 to 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with the promise that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. For three verses, God speaks directly to the children. The first word of this chapter is direct address, children. I am, I'm God's child and always will be. I feel like I'm the favorite. Sitam Valley Road is my church and it is in this church that I have learned what I'm going to speak to us today so you can grow up and have the best life and future you could ever imagine. Did you know that you won't be a child forever? You are growing so fast and it will be too long and you'll be a grown up and have a kid or two or 10 of your own. And someday, some of you might be able to teach this to someone and tell them when you, when you are a child. God loves children. Sadly, many are abandoned or abused. Many are homeless and many live in countries that fight. Children in this service, you have wonderful parents and you have been blessed, I want you to know. If any of you feel like you don't have the best parents, remember they are, that they are sinners just like all of us. They need to learn and grow just like you do and God is a father who loves you unconditionally no matter what your home is like. God loves you when you behave and when you are bad. When you're having a hard day, he cares and wants to help you. When it's going to be great, he's there hoping you'll not forget him, but thank him for blessing you. The way you think about your parents is how you'll come to think about God. God is authority, he's in charge, and parents are authority that, are authority that God put, has put in charge of you. And as you learn how to obey your parents, you learn how to obey God. The sinful world wants to brainwash you and make you think that sin is okay and that you need not to be like Jesus. If you are going to be positioned for impact as children, it is important to know what to do. First, obey for two reasons. Because it's the Christian thing to do in the Lord and because it's the right thing to do. For this is right. The Bible says that disobedience is, very, is a very serious sin. That leads to many other really bad sins the devil wants to get you to do. Romans 1, chapter 1, verse 28 to 13. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God, ga God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, conviciousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, desired, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Obeying your parents is where it all begins. Do you want to obey God? Then right now, he wants you to obey your parents. Do you obey your parents? If they, have, if they tell you something twice, then you did not obey. But I did it, not when you were supposed to do it. You disobeyed first. Delayed obedience is disobedience. They should not have to count down. Clean your room, okay, I'll get to it. That's premeditated obedience. 
Obedience is not obedience unless it is immediate. Do you obey completely? If you don't fully obey totally 100%, then you disobey. Incomplete obedience is disobedience. If you have obeyed halfway, then you completely disobeyed. Obedience isn't obedience unless it is immediate and complete. There's a few verses in the Bible about when Jesus was a child, and that one story teaches us that he obeyed his parents. He was a subject or submissive to them. Jesus is perfect, and he obeyed imperfect, sinful parents that he created. If Jesus would have disobeyed his parents, even one time, he could not have been perfect and died for our sins. We could not have been saved and go to heaven. God wants us to obey. I would like to invite my fellow preacher, James Apollo, to continue. Thank you. Thank you, Prudence, for the good work. Praise the Lord, church. God is good. And all the time. My name is James Apollo. I'm in class 7. Number 2, honor. Let's read the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 2 to 3. Respect your father and mother is the first commandment that has a promise added so that all may go well with you and you may live a long time in the land. It's possible to obey, to obey and not honor. If you obey with a bad attitude, you are not honoring your parents. I may be sitting down on the outside, but I'm standing up on the inside. If you take out the trash, sneering, complaining the whole way in your heart, you may be obeying, but you certainly are not honoring. And God says that, you, that your parents deserve both obedience and honor. If you disrespect your parents, you disrespect the God who gave them to you. If you talk back to them or say bad things about them behind their back or roll your eyes at them or wish you had different parents, you're not honoring them. If you, if you argue, if you lie, if you steal from them, you do not have honor. If, it, if, you, fake it, if you fake it in front of them to their face and manipulate your parents to get your way, you do not honor them. I'm a grown-up now and don't, have par and don't have to obey my parents, but should I still honor them? Yes, and God promises you live longer if you do. How many have, how many have, parents, who love, how many have parents who love you enough to tell you not to smoke? If you obey, I promise you live longer. Are you God's child? Are you saved? Do you obey him? Do you obey your parents? We as children need to obey and honor our parents. I will invite Pastor Reverend Macau to continue from here. Thank you, my fellow preachers of the day. It says, fathers, do not provoke your children, but bring them in the training and in the instruction of the Lord. The two preachers are talking to their fellow children and I want to summarize and talk to parents this morning. Somebody called Jim, John Wilton said, before I was married, I had three theories about raising children. Now I have three children, he said, I have no theories. <laughs> Only those who have tried to bring up children can understand that insanity is hereditary. You can get it from your children. Being a parent, is an explicable ex blessing. At the same time, it is an incomparable challenge. No other endeavor in life will excite you and exhaust you, bless you and break you, delight you and drain you like the task of bringing a child. Someone asked a mother of three children who are wild preschoolers whether he or she will have, ch if she'll have children again, what will she do? And she said, sure, I'll want children, but not the same one as this. Though at times you wish you could trade your, in your children for a model with less maintenance, the reality is that your child is a unique gift from God. In his sovereign wisdom, God has entrusted you with the life of another person, one that is usually a lot like yourself. They say a tree, a fruit, does not fall far from a tree. Those children 
have something similar to what you are some years back. Let me say here, with the blessings of children comes the high and heavy responsibility of being a parent. It's not for the fearful or the coward, the selfish or the foolish. Parenting is a lifetime task and it carries with it risks but also eternal rewards. Christian parents have an obligation to bring their children in accordance with the teachings of the word of God. Godly parents not only simply raise up their children, they raise them upright in a way that is biblical and pleasing to the Lord. The apostle Paul is in domestic theology says that in verse 5 and 6, and gives an instruction about how people should live in a family. And Paul opens verse number 6 by what our children have read for us this morning. And verse 4, it says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them in the nurture and in the fear of the Lord. The word father here, I want you to refer to both parents. And I want to examine three things that I want us to live with us today, this day, as parents. Number one, it says, if you want to raise your children right, treat your children with care. Number one. If you ever watch a toddler, fall over 500 times a single day, bouncing their heads off the furniture and the floor, then you know very well that children can remarkably take, be tough and resilient. When kids are physically tough, they're emotionally fragile. That is why Paul begins his instruction by telling the parents in a negative command. He says, do not provoke your children. And that phrase, provoke not, can be said this way. It means, do not irritate or agitate to the point of causing resentment. Some person says that, do not exasperate your children. The idea here is not to treat your children in such a way that you bring them to the point of frustration, anger, I can't even see, despair, and resentment. In other words, the Apostle Paul is saying, a godly parent will be careful in how they'll treat their children. Paul will not tell us to become angry or to, put them, to push them to anger. But he says this. This is what I have learned from that scripture. First, it says this. A critical parent can cause a child to become angry. There's a difference in verbal correction and hurtful criticism. The parent who constantly harps on a child's flaws and failures, always pointing out what is wrong with a child, is raising up a child who will be full of resentment. Also, a confusing parent can create an angry child. What I mean is this, the parent that is not incon is con incon inconsistent, a parent who demands one thing from a child, but does another thing themselves. Or the parent who allows one thing today, but demands something else the next day, is a confusing parent. You'll raise up children who will be frustrated. A cold parent also will produce a frustrated and angry child. The mom or dad that is detached and is distant from their child or shows no little concern or interest and feels affection and affirmation is a cold parent. There are fathers here who can't allow their children to come and hug them and even come run to them. You raise a child that is cold and a child who resent you some years to come. A child come running and they say, hey, go there. Years are coming. You'll reap. Finally, many others, a complacent parent will also raise an angry child. The complacent parent is the one who is too busy with other things or simply too lazy to give their children what they need. The child of a complacent parent will grow up with resentment and frustration. Go get money, make money. Go be as busy as you can be. Come home late, tell me you want to come. Don't have time with your children. A time is coming, daddy and mommy, you'll reap. When those children will disobey you, 
when those two want to hear anything from you, the West has had this on their own. And that is why when their parents at a particular age, the children say, you are old, we can't live with you. Go and live in an orphanage. That shows children that have been growing with resentment. I want to talk here and say, if you want to raise your children right, you must treat them with care. But also, number two, you must train your children through commitment. I want to thank parents who brought their children for a whole two months here, every Saturday, to rehearse for this DVBS. Was it easy? No. Did you have things to go and do? Yes. But you found your time to bring them every morning and again pick them at 12 every day of their training. One of the famous verses I love in the Bible, this is the Sabbath of parenting. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from you. This DVBS will, 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 will be anchoring in the lives of these children. 20 years from today, 30 years from today, they'll be saying, we, were, we used to go to church in a church called Valley, we used to have DVBS, and they will sing about this thing. They'll tell you their children about this thing. It says, bring them up in the nurture and the fear of the Lord. The word bring up is translated in Greek to bring up to maturity. The idea of caring for someone until they have grown into adulthood. Understanding that parenting is not just a part-time job. It's a full-time job. It's a process that requires commitment. As someone has noted, you spend the first two years of your life teaching your children to walk and talk. True? Then you spend the next 18 years Telling them to sit down and to be quiet. In all seriousness, the Bible tells us that parents who want to build and train good children must be serious committed in a couple of specific areas. We have left homework for children with the teachers. We are wise. We employ house helps that, are, that know English, that have got some qualifications. And the only thing you say, put the daddy on the table. When I come, I will sign. Because you're a wise parent. You have no time for children's homework. You have no time to spend a weekend with them, go out and play. You are a busy parent. You are a CEO maybe. Or you are somewhere. Your grandchildren can't even have time with you. You're a wise parent. Friends, I tell us here. Time is coming for us to reap. And I want to tell us, parenting is not the job of school teachers. You know, we, some of us here, our kids go to school where we pay half a million per term. Praise the Lord for that. But let me tell you one thing, that cannot replace your place as a father or a mother. Others say, you know, they go to Sunday school they know the word of God. They have safari books and all those things. Even when you have safari books, you don't open them to check what have they done in the week. We are so busy. Pastor, I have no idea. I began my MBA this, this last month. I must work. I have business trips that I need to go to. Bible says, do not provoke your children to anger. But bring them in the fear of the Lord. When you're a parent, you are, don't take vacation on parenting. There's no school. There's no, at the time now schools are closed. Now we are still closed schools, but parenting continues. Somebody called Hamon was a baseball player in the U.S. in the class of 1984. He told about how his father had taught him, him and his brother, how to play baseball in front of the yard of their home. And in this yard, their mother had put a very pretty lawn of grass that was well, well kept. And the daddy would tell them, go and play baseball out there. And the boys would go and play baseball on this green carpet grass that mom was taking care of. One day, 
Mom came out and told the boys, you are ruining my grass. And daddy quietly went and told mommy, in front of the children, we are raising children, not grass. There are those chairs kids can't even get to. There are those utensils they can't even eat in. Nzawageni. There are things they can't touch in that house. Are you raising a, a carpet grass? A good TV? Or are you raising children? Some of us, they'll be given the chance, they'll put fence in their homes where children are allowed only to walk different places. An aunt from a friend of mine told me once in a while, he allows his children to come to their bedroom. And he says, Saturday mornings are my day to have my, I know I'm a very busy person, once in a while I allow them to come to my bedroom. He says, Saturday morning when I hear the knock on my door at 6 a.m., I know it's tiresome. I know it's bad, but I open my door and they, they come to my bed. And they jump on that six by six bed and they feel good and they enjoy and they, daddy cuddles them and talk to them and they, and they want to have that. Take time with your children. Let them feel the love. And finally it says, teach your children about Christ. Verse 4 says, admonition of the Lord. The efforts of a Christian parent are aimed at producing a child who knows and loves the Lord. Raising your children right means teaching them what is right. This means that they must teach your children about Jesus. As a parent, the Bible calls you to be an evangelist in your home. It is so sad, my friend, when a parent is more concerned about their children going to college or a good school than going to heaven. It's a tragedy when a father will lift up a child at 6 a.m. in the morning to go to Ligindogo and learn football and learn some big equipments, but not teach him how to carry their Bible and walk with Jesus. If we are going to do our homework, we must begin by teaching our children about Christ. And I want to say this to us this morning. First of all, do not neglect the opportunity. I'm afraid that too many parents spend little time or no time talking to their children about the things of God. James Dobson once observed and said, we spend so much time trying to give our children the things we do not have that we have forgotten to give them what that we, didn't, we did have. Good education, good things, but also let's all give them eternal life. I want to say this with no fear. If you do not teach your children about Christ, you have failed them as a parent. Don't neglect the opportunity. Some of our parents, as we grew up, did not take this chance to tell us about Jesus. We found Jesus on our own after we stumbled and fell and went to the things of the world. But you were hearing my voice. You have the chance to begin it now. Talk to your children about Jesus. A little boy asked his dad one day, Daddy, what is a Christian? And the dad thought for a moment because he wanted to give a good answer to such an important question. Finally he said, a Christian is a person who loves and obeys God. He loves his friends, his neighbors, and even his enemies. He is kind, he is gentle, and prays a lot. He looks forward to going to heaven and thinks that God, knowing God, is better than anything else on earth. That son is a Christian. A little boy sat quietly for a minute. Then he said, Daddy, 
Have I ever seen a Christian? Daddy, have I ever seen a Christian? As a Christian parent, if you're going to raise your children right, you must share Christ with them and show them Christ to them. You must teach them about Christ. In my conclusion, a Sunday school teacher once asked the class, why do you love God? And there were a number of answers from different children. But the best came from a small little boy of six years who said, I guess it runs in the family. Loving God runs in the family. For this to happen, for both parents to raise their children and fathers and mothers are going to have to treat their children with care and train them in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. Daddy, have I seen a Christian? Mommy, have I ever seen a Christian? Bishop, come and pray for us. I'm